There are many unknowns regarding the dynamic systems of a star, whether it being the ever-changing magnetic field, the immense power that's created by it, or the origins of solar winds. But the best way to understand a star is to go to one. NASA is about to launch the Parker Solar Probe, which is going to get closer to the surface of the sun than any spacecraft before it. So what discoveries does NASA plan on making with this probe, and will it actually be able to help us save some of our satellites here around Earth? Let's talk about that. The sun is most commonly known for providing energy and warmth to the planet Earth. However, the sun also affects Earth in less familiar ways, one of these ways being solar winds. Now, solar winds are streams of energized particles created from the outskirts of the sun and traveling at velocities up to 500 kilometers per second. Now, these winds are capable of changing the orbits of our satellites and even affecting their electrical components, which ultimately shorten their lifespan. It's also known that solar winds can affect electrical grids here on Earth, but they also create the auroras that we find incredibly beautiful across the solar system. So the more that we understand solar winds, the better we'll be able to predict in keeping our spacecraft safe, the electronics safe, as well as planning our vacations to see the northern lights. But solar winds don't just stop at Earth. They continue onwards to the edge of our solar system. So for any crewed missions beyond Earth, we'll have to look into how we can protect them from these energized particles. So how will we be able to understand the ever-changing patterns of these solar winds? Now, first of all, the Parker Solar Probe is going to be flying through the sun's upper atmosphere, more specifically, six million kilometers away from the surface of the sun. Now, this might sound like a lot, but it's actually seven times closer than any spacecraft has ever gotten to the sun. It will be flying through the corona of the star, where the solar winds are born. So by getting this close, we'll not only be able to image what is happening in this area, but also record the magnetic fields, the electrical fields, as well as what the particles are doing in terms of their temperature and velocities to see how it changes as we get further and closer to the sun. Now speaking of temperature, the corona is actually one of the hottest parts of a star, which is strange because it's on the outside. However, it's capable of reaching temperatures up to a million degrees Celsius. Now, the temperature actually doesn't matter so much. Since the density of the particles in the corona is so small, the particles don't come into contact with the probe that frequently. Therefore, there isn't a lot of energy transfer or heat transfer from the particles themselves to the probe, even though it's such high temperatures. But the major issue in terms of temperature they have to worry about is the sun. They're so close to the sun that the radiation causes the spacecraft to reach temperatures almost to 1400 degrees Celsius, which is much more reasonable than a million degrees Celsius, but it's still too hot for their electronics. When we're this close to the sun, it takes about eight minutes for a signal from Earth to get to the probe, which is too much time for the electronics to survive if something were to go wrong. For example, if the probe was facing in a direction that wasn't towards the sun or wasn't in the exact alignment that it needed to be, the electronics would heat up pretty quickly and would only survive for up to a minute depending on what this angle is. And since we're eight minutes away to send a signal, that's not fast enough to keep it alive. Therefore, this spacecraft actually aligns itself. Some engineers even say it's one of the most autonomous spacecraft that NASA have ever built because the survivability of the spacecraft itself is dependent on how well it can stay aligned to the sun. Now, as of right now, the probe is scheduled to launch on Saturday, August 11th on board a Delta IV Heavy. Now, if you're interested in learning about how the spacecraft will use the planet Venus to get to the sun, or if you're interested in the heat shield and how it's able to sustain such high temperatures, or even what the instruments will be able to do and what that will provide us in terms of information, check out the full length video that's gonna come out on Thursday. So do you think that NASA's Parker Solar Probe will help us predict solar activity? Or rather, do you think it might just create more questions that we might not find the answers to? Let me know in the comment, I would love to hear what you have to say. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.